Galatians 3.11, but that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God, it is evident, for the just shall live by faith. Ever since Adam and Eve ate of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, mankind has sought to categorize everything in this world as good or evil. The church and religion in general has, has also always seems to want to turn the walk of faith into a walk by rules and laws, by making a list of do and don't that are the official dictum of the church hierarchy. This may be okay when we are dealing with spiritual babes who are still being fed with spiritual milk. Hebrews 5.13 For everyone who lives on milk is unskilled in the word of righteousness since he is a child. But Christians are supposed to grow up into mature leaders, not remain babies all their lives. Hebrews 5.14 But solid food is for the mature, for those who have their powers of discernment trained by constant practice, distinguishing good and evil. See, we can judge every moment and everything we come into contact with as either good or evil. We don't need mom and dad or the church leaders standing over our shoulders all our lives telling us what we should and shouldn't do. Some church leaders want to keep us babes so they can continue to make a living off of our contributions to their mastery over us. This is an evil they don't want you to mature enough to discern. It was music and the categorizing of music that started me thinking about this. Many churches want to categorize music into what is good and, and what is evil for us. This, of course, is a very simple matter to discern good music from evil. If these leaders want to label music into categories that they can put in their do and don't do list, turning the use of music into a law instead of an inspiration led by the Spirit of God. Many are so afraid of wildfire, they have no fire at all. They are lukewarm. It was specifically, specifically condemnation of rock and roll by some that I'm up in arms about. I'm not even sure what they mean by rock and roll exactly. I suppose they want to listen to each piece of music and approve or disapprove with a stamp of okay or rejected. That might be necessary for their dole of hearing dumbed down flocks. For, for us that are mature in the Lord, we can discern music for ourselves. Considering most of the funeral dirges that pass for hymns in many churches, I suppose, suppose by rock and roll they mean any music that is lively and might inspire someone to get up out of their seats and start dancing, like in the movie The Blues Brothers. When the Blues Brothers get possessed for the music at church, dance down the aisle of the church, presenting their souls to the Lord, and yell, I've seen the light. This also reminds me of the story from the Old Testament, when King David danced so lively and wildly before the parade bringing the Ark of the Covenant back into Jerusalem, they would exposed his manhood to the cheering crowds along the streets. One of King David Saul's daughters admonished David for his lewd, commoner behavior, to which he retorted, it was before the Lord in celebration of that I danced, and I will be more base than that. I will be had in honor by the handmaidens of Israel that watch me dance. The scripture goes on to say Saul's daughter was stricken barren, childless, because of her attitude. I think this lack of bearing fruit is at least partially what happened to the church. Its narrow-minded re religiosity stops the flow of the celebration of the Spirit of God, turns the church into a let the dead bury the dead, keep your light under a basket atmosphere that few new believers want or can stand the taste of. Just my two cents worth. Those who accept the fact that God has accept, accepted them as sons and daughters of God because they have believed on the work that Jesus Christ did on the cross to redeem them are saved.